we go. Game six. We've been asking for it. Mavs in six has been our call since before the playoffs even began. Let's get into it and preview this game. Locked on Mavs. Mavs in six, baby. It's happening tonight. Let's do it. It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Locked On Mavericks Podcast. I don't believe you shouldn't be here. And welcome. You are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Angstead, media member and coordinator for the Locked On Podcast Network. And joining me, as always, my co host, contributor at Mavs.com. The vibes. The vibes are immaculate. Irony. The one more thinking. What you got for me, Isaac Harris? Oh, man. This could be an all timer night in Dallas tonight. And. If you're listening be, to man. this, I know, I know it It could be if you went to, I was there for game three and game four in Dallas heartbreaker. Mm. I did not like driving home after those two. <laughs> um, well, because you got stuck in traffic for like 30 minutes. Yes. Um, if you're going to the game, just don't park in the Lexus garage. <laughs> that's, that's, all, <laughs> that's all I ask. Uh, but no, it's it, this, this is going to be an all timer night uh, as far as like crowd atmosphere yeah, you know, they're in the arena. I mean, if we thought game three was crazy, then this game six could be just insane, especially, you know, if they pull away with it and they win and they win this series and everything, man, it's it could be a, a really fun night or we could be walking out of this saying this is the weirdest series we've ever seen in our life <laughs> of all teams winning on the on the road. And but there's still a little positive, you know, silver lining too. if they lose this game saying, all right, well, we know we know we can win in L.A., but uh, we don't want to have that thought yet. Today's episode is brought to you by Michelob Ultra. It's only 2.6 carbs, 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Stay tuned today for the Ultra Moment of the Week coming up later. The No Dunks guys called it a hobo series because nobody's winning at home. And no, <laughs> nobody has won at home yet. Uh, but it could happen. Game six tonight. So today we are going to preview game six. It's absolutely wild that it's gotten to this point. Incredible Game 5 win. If you haven't, go watch our video on YouTube about Game 5, how the Mavericks won Game 5. Uh, man, last time the Mavericks won a playoff round, what happened? Gosh, no, I got to think back to it. I mean, I, You don't have to think back that much. I mean, it was, I guess it was 2011. I know we last were, time they won a playoff round, it was 2011. I know we joked a while back that we hadn't had playoffs until, uh, you know, since the vince carter um, san antonio series but we forget about the okc series that happened you know back like four years ago and it was nasty and it was a blowout but that was uh there were playoff games against okc since then but yeah man if they win a series this is insane it I mean, if they win, okay, so if they win tonight, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll do the full hypothetical, but if they win tonight, then all of a sudden, this season is a success, like guaranteed success no matter what else happens. I literally thought right? about that exact thought driving today. I was like, if they win this series, then you're playing with house money. And I know that that probably- I know we've been saying that anyway, though. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, but that, that, and that still probably makes some people listening to this and saying, no, that's stupid. We need to, you know, we're going to win, like, we have to win this next series too. And it's like, all of a sudden- yeah, we're going to like hope like but if they yeah, right. if they win this series and then they go and play a Utah Jazz team and they lose to the Jazz in five or six games, I'm still going to call it a success. Like that right. I will. Some you you guys can disagree but I will. If they beat this Clippers team in the first round, like come on. Like that's that's huge. It's not like they're the Knicks. I mean, come on. The roster improvements have been marginal. Uh, if any, <laughs> if, if this yeah. roster has improved at all from last year, right? A lot of people would argue it hasn't improved. And by and large, the players are basically all the same, except for Richardson and Curry, which Richardson's not even playing that much. And so, so the roster is basically the same. You're getting revenge against this Clippers team that everyone says is a little bit better or is a better team than they were last year. And so, yeah, it would be a success. So now we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. Let's talk about this actual game. Uh, what stays? Let's do this first. Boban and KP in the starting lineup, the zone defense, Dorian on Kawhi. Which one of those three things do you think stays? And then we'll break them all down a little bit. Well, the Dorian Ka Kawhi thing isn't 
that like isn't as simple as hey Dorian you shadow Kawhi because that didn't happen the entire game I know some of us like we wanted to throw that out there but the the key to the Kawhi thing is they just threw so many different looks at Kawhi they did doubles they did Dorian they you know did the zone defense and you know they would go zone a lot but then they'd switch to man they just kept the Clippers on their toes so much and that was where Rick Rick Carlisle gets a lot of credit for that that was that part it was incredible coaching but I think we will see Dorian on Kawhi more. You know, we didn't get any of Maxi on Kawhi. We've we've seen basically no. the whole series, and kind of Maxi was just like, "Oh, all right, I guess I'm just going to be relegated to this uh, smaller role off the bench now." Whenever he was, you know, guarding Kawhi most of the game, but that this was one of my biggest questions for you: is does Boban start this next game? Because the thing with Boban, and we love Boban, but the more you see him. I'm scared that if you roll out the same game plan, that they've already just picked it apart in you know film and everything. And that's, I want to say, I don't think they do. I don't think Boban starts. I think we could see a Dwight Powell start. I've been kind of looking at his minutes. And remember when they started the game, it was 14 and nine when they first came out. And yes, it was because Luca hit a bunch of threes to start. He hit like his first five threes or whatever to start. But that first stint, like really... It kind of built on itself. Basketball is not necessarily, you know, uh, what happens in one quarter happens in another quarter happens in another quarter. It sort of builds on itself, right? Like they're not all just individual quarters and individual stints. So what happened was the Mavericks go big. And so what do they do? They take away the paint and KP and Boban are not necessarily the best rim protectors, but together it's just two big people like down in the paint. You can't just yeah. get in there and finish really around those guys. So what it did was, and they also, since they were playing the zone, everybody's running around the paint. And so just the paint is kind of taken away from this team. And then the Clippers had to take more jumpers and longer jumpers than they're used to because since the paint was taken away, Paul George and Kawhi couldn't start getting their mid-range jumpers going. And so they had to take a bunch of threes early and they missed them. And that's why yesterday we were talking about, man, this Clippers team's still getting a lot of open threes, but because they missed them, it threw them off their game. And then all of a sudden, it, like they couldn't get in a rhythm early. And so it took away that first. And then, it took, then their three ball wasn't going. And so then they couldn't get in a rhythm shooting the ball and, and all that. And so it just really threw everything off when you start that way. Then when you go into the third quarter, the Mavericks actually, uh, the way that they ended that quarter, I thought was sort of what, what changed things. So they had that, that quarter where it was Dwight Powell and it was Dorian and, and Hardaway. And they were really... Uh, and Porzingis, I guess, too. Porzingis was in there. And that's a little bit of a smaller lineup. Like, you would still call that two bigs, but Dwight Powell is essentially the same size as, like, a Paul George. Right? Like, he, he plays, uh, like, a big. But, I mean, he's, like, 6'10", 6'9". Paul George, pretty, I mean, he's pretty close there now. Um, but, yeah, so, so you play a little – you play faster, at least. You play a little faster with, with, with yeah. Dwight Powell. And in that way, they got some stops. They, they did all that kind of stuff. And so – I think with Boban, to make my point now, to, with Boban, I think it has to be a change of pace and to throw something off. It can't yeah. be the thing you rely on. I'm not sure. And, and Boban only played 20 minutes in this game. It's not like he's playing 30 minutes and he was an integral part of the entire game. He was a part of stints and he helped, you know, in different stretches. So I think they probably use him again. Now, is it to start the game? Maybe. We'll see. Maybe they try that same thing again. Also, it kind of worked. So maybe, maybe they try that again, but maybe not use it as much throughout the game. And that that's why I'm, I wonder like what Rick has up his sleeve, because, you know, even going into that last game, I mean, it came out before Tim Cato tweeted it out and it's like, Hey, Boban's going to be in the starting lineup. Ty Lu said in his pregame you know, media session before game five saying, Hey, you know, we're expecting Boban in there tonight. I, you know, Rick, you know, still went with him, even though Ty Lue and them, you know, figured that. So I wonder if Lou and them are expecting Boban to be back because they won. And if Rick thinks that they're expecting that, does Rick counter it already and kind of surprise them and be like, all right, here's Dwight Powell in the start. I just wonder what is there a wild card that Rick has up his sleeve that he's waiting to pull out in this game six of saying, all right, I've held on to this. And now here I am. I'm going to lay it all on the table to win this thing at home. I'm gonna tell you it's what Josh it is. Green. I'm yeah. gonna tell. I was gonna, I was gonna say, it's Tyler Bay. He's been waiting for it all year. Literally hasn't pulled. Or maybe what if it's Tyrell Terry? What What would be the craziest thing that would happen in this game? Tyrell Terry comes out and hits like four threes. Yeah, that would be the craziest thing that ever happened. Bay locking down Kawhi would be hilarious. <sighs> Just like, like does one of those blocks where he doesn't just block the ball. He grabs it over top. 
right? Like if he yeah. just blocked him like that, that would be the crazy. Nate Hinton comes out and gets like five offensive rebounds in a row. That would <laughs> just a super hyped. Yeah, I, I don't know what his change is. Maybe it's Willie Colley Stein in the starting lineup, even though it doesn't seem like Carlisle can trust him. Maybe it's a Brunson. Maybe it's a Brunson situation where they just they go real like fi- yeah. they finally go real small. They haven't done that yet. I don't know if that's an advantage for them, but. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things. But uh, let's get into the ultra moment of the week. So there's a lot of different moments from Game 5 I think we can point to, and I think it kind of has to be from Game 5. But let's get into the, the Michelob Ultra moment of the week from the playoffs. The moment that brought you joy, happiness, enjoyment. What was the moment from Game 5? And let's just start batting them around until we come up with one uh, that gave you the most joy. I'm going to go with, in the words of Rick Carlisle, the most important, biggest shot <laughs> of the entire year for the Dallas Mavericks was Christos Porzingis's corner yes. three-pointer, one, one-legged in, in Nick Batum's face. Uh, I'm going with that shot. That was a good one. That second really- best player on the team. The two stars on the Mavericks and Luka and KP and for the second best player on the team. <laughs> Chris stops hitting that shot was big. He's making Isaac is making emphasis because Rick Carlisle made emphasis that, that Chris Alps Porzingis was I'm pointing the he, they're the two that's stars. What, that's what he said. I'm gonna so I'll throw another moment out there. Kawhi's air ball at the end when Dorian was guarding Ooh. you. I feel like that was just that was a big moment of like, oh, they're gonna win this game. You know, it's fi- finally Philly fans are like what? Why couldn't that happen with the- <laughs> I know you're holding your breath, holding your breath. I have another one for you. Rajon Rondo, top of the key. Throws up a three. Mm. Nothing. Not even net. Camera pans. Mark Cuban on the bench or on the on the baseline. Stands up, screams, excited, sits down, hits Michael Finley, and Michael Finley just looks at him and is like, I ain't getting into that. <laughs> I'm not messing with that right now. Cuban is just all into it. I think Rondo airballing that three was was an amazing moment. <laughs> yes. Um if we're staying with game five, I mean, if I can Have just to. lump one quarter together, then I'm mm. just I'm going with with, you know, Lucas for first quarter, 19 points, five, five from three. Also, I don't know if we have to do game five because I'm going to say those first few minutes of game three were magical. Oh, that's true. Inside. That, that's inside within the week, right? I guess so. No, that was last Friday. So no, that counts. Okay. Today's Friday, so. Those first, I mean, going up what 14 to two or whatever it was. And I mean, the place was just, I mean, you couldn't even, I was screaming at sharks next to me. Like you just couldn't even hear yourself. That, that was pretty, uh, pretty cool moment. There you go. The ultra moment of the week, the beginning of game three that the Mavericks lost, all those other moments from game five. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Again, joy creates success. Enjoyment isn't the end game. It's the whole game. Get some Michelob Ultra and enjoy. Hopefully tonight you'll enjoy game six. We'll get into some more coming up. All right, Isaac, let's get into the uh, the other changes that are going to happen for the Mavericks. So we talked about Boban. Do you think he's going to start? No. You don't think so? I think Dwight Powell starts. Ooh. Another moment I didn't mention in our ultra moment of the week was Dwight Powell's rebound that turned into a Dorian. I just tweeted it out or, tonight. I've thought about that dang rebound so much today. It's just one rebound, but I've just I keep on thinking about it. It was huge, man. It was yeah. and then also he had that he had that put back that like he's flying he was flying yeah. up there. It almost looked like he was above the ball and had to like take it and throw it down. He he had a Euro <laughs> step too, kind of kind of in transition. That was pretty nice. But I think the bigger question is like what what do the Clippers change? What do yeah, the Clippers yeah. change in game six? And we talked about the stat muse tweet that went out, you know, a few nights ago after they lost game five is saying, you know, Zubats in the game that he's played over 18 minutes, you know, they lost every one of those games against the Mavericks this series. So I wonder at almost 20 minutes in game five, I wonder if that do those minutes go down Do they try to give a little bit more to Terrence, man, who can the Clippers play? How do they play Luca? You know, that it's basically, you have to make, does the it choice. matter how they play Luca? Like how many more things can they try? I know it, but like, Okay, it's how you it's you're choosing what you want to give up, right? And this is what any team going against an all-time great player, you always have to choose. Do you want to try to take out the star or do you want to take out the supporting cast? And what Well, well, Marcus Morris already tried to take out the star, so I don't, I don't know if they can try that again. <laughs> That's true. But it's like if you try 
like if, if you're the Clippers and you're saying, hey, I'm going to try to just trap Luka. I think they were talking about it after, after the game on the TNT broadcast. I was going to say, all right, next game, the Clippers just have to trap him. The Steph Curry treatment, like Memphis yeah. and the Lakers did, just trying to get the ball out of their hands and then just make Luka make the right decision, which he always normally does. So, But then you're empowering the other players. And so far in those first few games when they were trying to do that, the other guys were hitting. I mean, you look up at spot up numbers for the entire playoffs. Dallas is shooting spot up shots 46% from the field. That's number one of all the teams that are in the playoffs and the playing tournament. Top three teams Denver, Dallas, and the Clippers, as far as points per possession, at 1.15, pretty much all, all three teams. But 46% from, from spot up. Like, this is huge. Dallas is shooting the ball very, very well. And the, the difference of that, if, if they try to trap Luka and take him out and dare the rest of the teammates to hit, then if it's a close game in the fourth, guess who's in rhythm? That Damian Lillard game was so much fun the other night. It was a blast. It was an all-time playoff performance. But when that game was on the line in double overtime and that ball swings to C.J. McCollum and he misses the shot and you're like, dang, and everybody's like giving C.J. flack, but nobody shot the ball in 20 minutes. Like, yeah. You can't like it's kind of sucky. It's like, hey, you get it because he's all time like that was an all time performance. But these guys just weren't shooting the ball. So when you try to take Luca out and you're empowering these other guys, then everybody's staying in that rhythm, right? And especially if they're hitting. So that's just you're just picking your poison. And I'm just curious of what the Clippers will do. This is the reason why at the beginning of every game, the first play is always run for somebody else. It was, yeah, it was Hardaway. It's Hardaway in game five. It's been KP pretty much every other game. Like they've been running plays for somebody else to start the game because it doesn't matter. Like it doesn't matter when Luca gets going, he'll get going eventually, and he can get his shots. And yeah, so that that's why they do that. I think for the for the Clippers, I think if they try to do so, the the, <laughs> the Mavericks are keep trying to bring out Zubots. They keep wanting to to bring him out and yeah. bring him out. That's why they go. That's another reason why they bring go big. Out, bring him out. It's not just because of the zone. It's to try and entice Ty Lu to bring Zubots out. Yeah. So. If they don't do that, then they get beat inside by KP and 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 uh, Boban, you know, pick and roll, which they ran a lot. They ran a ton of Boban and Luca pick it, screen and roll in the first half, and all of Boban's minutes basically it was just over and over again <laughs> until yeah. they decided. And the, to put and the Clippers got to take advantage of the size on the floor too. Like True. they're the number one team in transition. They're at one point one three. Uh, as far as playoff teams in in the playoffs, like they're the best team in transition, they got to get up and run against this Dallas team. The hard part about that though is when you're running pick and roll like that with Luca and Boban, they're both so staying slow, and you see, like yeah. it comes off like the rim, the ball comes off the rim slow, and because Luca's just throwing it from there, or Boban's just throwing it from like one foot away, like or an inch away because he's just so tall up there. And Boban will get it, or KP will go, or, or come in and get it, or, or somebody. You know, but Luca will be right there for a putback. So there's not a ton of opportunities when you're playing. The margins are are huge for the Mavericks. There, it's not yeah. like when you're bombing a bunch of threes from the outside, and then the the ball can just ricochet all over the place, and you have a ton of fast break opportunities. So unless they get an actual stop, like a block or a steal or something like that, which is really hard against Luca and super hard against Boban. Uh, yeah, there's just not a lot of opportunities there. So you're sort of like taking away some of that from them too. Which, yeah. Which is pretty interesting. And then I, I want to look at some of the percentages for the Clippers, not, you know, their three point percentage for sure, but also their free throw percentage when they get to the line, you know, Kawhi yeah. is shooting high 80%, you know, Paul George for the series is shooting 96%. That's 96%, not 95 because 95 is the amount of calories that's in a Michelob Ultra because today on the road to the finals, our NBA playoffs coverage is brought to you by Michelob Ultra. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. And at 2.6 carbs, 95 calories, we could all enjoy games a little bit more this season. One of the things about their three-point percentage for the Clippers that is so fascinating to me, they're the best three-point shooting team in the league. We know that, 42% from three this season. They average 34 threes a game as a team. This series, there's only been two games that they've shot <laughs> – over 34 three-pointers in a game. Game one and game five. Both games they lost. So game one, they shot 40 threes. Game five, they shot 38 threes. In both of the games that they won in game, game three and game four, they shot 31 threes and 33 threes. So maybe I'm wrong in the sense of, hey, if you give them more threes, that's a bad thing. Maybe Dallas is looking at it saying, hey, like let's give them more three-pointers because – 
if they're shooting the more threes they're shooting so that they shot 27 percent in game one they shot 36 percent in game five in game three and game four they shot 42 percent and 39 percent so if you try to put a number on it of saying all right if we if the clippers can shoot less than 38 percent we'll have a shot i don't think it's as easy as that but i thought that was kind of fascinating well and these these games have been so slow. Like a 91 yeah. pace is so slow. Like literally this these this series has been the slowest pace series by th- they, they play three less possessions than this Denver Portland. Like that's a that's a huge wow. margin. The top one is 76ers Wizards. They're at 102.6. Mavericks are at 91.6. Like that's a huge difference right there in pace. So this has been such a slow series that you're not going to get a ton of possessions and third I mean 38 threes that's like Almost like close to half of the, their shots are coming from there. So, yeah, yeah, I'm with you. All right, coming up, let's play a game, and we will uh, figure out what's going to happen in this game six. We've been calling it game six, Mavs and six. We'll get into that and uh, talk about that more. But before we do, let me tell you about RockAuto.com. It's a auto and body part manufacturer uh, store that has been. <laughs> Let me tell you about rockauto.com. It's a family business serving auto parts to customers online for 20 years. Go to rockauto.com to shop for auto and body parts from hundreds of manufacturers. Why would you want to spend all your time trying to go to a brick and mortar store just to look around, see that they have one part that may fit your car? You have to figure out if it's the exact specifications and all that. When you can just go to rockauto.com, their catalog is unique and remarkably easy to navigate. Quickly see all the parts available for your vehicle. Choose the brands, specifications, and prices that you prefer. Go to rockauto.com and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Write a locked on in their How Did You Hear About Us box. They know that we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Rockauto.com. Also, want to tell you about Built Bar. Built Bar is a protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. I have one every day. They're absolutely great. Love eating them. They are, uh, they're really good. Some people put them in the fridge, some people like them. Just in the cabinet, just as is. You can carry them with you. They're made with 100% chocolate, 100, 180 calories, uh, 18 grams of protein, 5 grams of sugar. That's the coconut almond. Some of them have less calories than that even. The raspberry is 130 calories, 17 grams of protein, 4 grams of sugar. That is not a lot for a bar that essentially tastes like a candy bar. You can kind of not tell the difference sometimes when you eat one and when you eat a candy bar. So go check out Built Bar. Go look at all the different flavors available and then go get the best ones for me, the ones that are always available. Mint brownie, solid. Raspberry, cherry barcia, the double chocolate is great. All that. Go to BuiltBar.com. Use the promo code LOCKED15 and get 15% off your next order. Again, promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at BuiltBar.com. All right, Isaac Harris. Game six coming up. What's the feel? What's the feel? You think the crowd's going to be hesitant or you feel like everyone's going to go in and be like as loud as ever? No, oh, I think it's going to be loud as ever. I I think this place is just going to be unheard of. Like it's just going to be wild. And it, yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be in the back of everybody's minds of what happened in game three. But I, I yeah, I think it's I don't I'm not doubting the energy of the place. I think it's going to be insane. I'm excited for it. Yeah. Can we play a game? Can I, I'm ready. Can we I'm play ready. a fill-in-the-blank game? Ooh. First one. The second leading scorer for the Mavs in game six will be blank. Ooh. Tim Hardaway Jr. I think he has a bounce-back game. I think seniors are going to show up. I have no inside knowledge, but I'm, I'm hoping. Ooh. I'm hoping seniors there, and if senior does. Uh-oh. Guess what day it is. Shut <laughs> it down. Oh, Let's go uh, Can you take a guess off the top of your head how many points per game Tim is averaging more than KP in this series? Is it three? Yeah, that's what it is. Good job. Thanks. Uh, Tim's averaging 17, and uh, KP's at 13.8. Chris Asperzing is 13.8 points per game in this series. Um, okay, cool. Luka Doncic will have blank amount of points in game six. 50. Also, I didn't get my answer for the first one. I'm going to go... Man, I feel like Tim's the... I'm going to go with Dorian Finney-Smith. Whoo, that would be crazy. Has like a eight, has like a six three game or something like that. Yeah, give me give me Dorian. I want to say KP, but I'll say Dorian. Dorian Dorian Finney Smith, second lead scorer. Um, Luka Doncic will have blank amount of points in Game Six. Give me fifty. Give him the oh. fifty. Give him the fifty burger. Shut it down. Oh, Let's go. I'm ready that, for it. I'm ready for it. 
There's two routes. Because there. because yeah. he's going to go off in the fourth quarter this time. I think this time we'll have a fourth quarter, Luca, and I think he'll close it and he'll shut it down. He'll shut it down. I'm ready for it. If, if he drops 50 shuts it, and shuts it down against Kawhi and them guys and Rondo and ends this series in Dallas, you might as well just p- put the dang statue up outside. Because it, this, yeah, I, I think I would just sleep at the AC at that point. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm going to go because there's two routes. This win happens if it happens, right? It's the yeah. Luca 50 pointer. He, he puts him on the, his back again. And it's just an insane game. All time performance, or it's a classic or it's a Luca 24, Tim Hardaway 20, KP 18, Brunson 16. It's something like that to where you have four or five guys that's in double figures instead of just two. And I'm I'm gonna lean <laughs> I'm gonna Fax lean had two guys in double figures in game five. Yes, I'm gonna lean that way. I think it's gonna be a team win on uh, on Friday night. I think it's gonna be Luca has like 28 or 30. I'll say 31. Luca has 31. But we're going to have like Tim at like 24, KP at like 21, you know, Dorian somewhere. Like it's going to be something like that. I, I think that's how they, they pull off this win. So Everybody's, how many does Luca get? 31. Gotcha. You said 50. That's going to be a. I'm ready for it. I, please, man. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be fun. Um, Kawhi and Paul George will combine for a blank amount of points. Fool, man. Or blank points i'll go 50 it would be wild if luca has 50 and Kawhi and paul george combine for 50 Ooh. and it's like he outscores them himself right or they get 49 or something like that that's wild and then and the, the maps have to, to win if those guys are getting 25 or less each right like that's how they win that's how they they're, won game five they're averaging 55 points for, together yeah yeah for this series i'm going to say that they will combine for 58 points and they will lose. Ooh, see, that'd be interesting. If nobody, yeah. it's just nobody else shows up for them. Yeah. Yeah. I think that will be the thing. There will be blank technical fouls handed out in this <laughs> game. Uh, because if the Clippers get down, they're not going to go, they're not going to go down in like a respectful way. It, are we sure be. they went down a respectful way in game five? Do we know that this team is like, I mean, we've been saying all of on this team. I know, but we've been saying all series are fake tough guys, right? Like, are they really gonna are they really gonna go out like that? I, I are they could, just gonna I save face it. and just you know? I could see them going out like that. This is this is a first round too. I mean, this is, I mean, this will, okay. This would be more embarrassing than last year losing. Hundred uh, percent. I mean, you're up. Well, three, they were down. They were up three one. Like up three one, and then you lose. This is it. your. This is your locked on. You know, like the locked on network, locked on NBA poll. If they lose, say which which series is more embarrassing. I, I will, I will not put that out there to jinx this Mavericks team. I will not. No, no, no. That. I'm saying if they lose, if they lose on Friday night. If it night, happens, if it happens, yeah. then I'll put the question out. Yeah. That's the question of like, what would be more, what is more embarrassing for the Clippers? Losing the 3-1 series lead against the Nuggets last year or losing the first round to this Mavericks team? Ooh, fascinating. Let us know in the chat. What do you think? Well, actually, don't do it yet. Don't do it yet. <laughs> in the chat in the in the comments let us know what you think about Bobon starting let's do that one instead <laughs> let's do that one instead of jinxing the maps and this one's a little more open-ended okay well how many texts are handed out oh yeah yeah uh i'm gonna go two it, it'll be this is combined kind of, for both teams yeah co- a double technical scenario will happen oh i think it's over. do we know who the refs are oh no no don't do this this we're at the end of the pod and now i'm gonna end this on a bad note if you say Kane Fitzgerald or Scott Foster, I'm coming through this like monitor right now. I'm not seeing it. Ever. They only have today's. Can I go forward in time? I think we're going to get multiple texts handed out. I'm saying over four. Over four. Okay. Three and a half. going to happen. Over under three and a half. You say under, I say over. Is that safe? Yeah, three and a half. Yeah, I'm going to say under, and you're going to say over. Yeah, I'll say over. Okay. All right, do that in the comments, too. Techni- how many technical fouls will be handed out in game six? Over, under, three and a half. So you think it's four, go over. You think it's three, then go under. I think we're going to get something early, too, in, like, early first quarter. Them trying to, refs trying to set the tone of, like, hey, we're not going to deal with this crap tonight. Uh, last one I have for you. It's more open-ended. 
The Mavericks win game six if blank. The Mavericks win game six if someone else steps up with Luka. Someone else mm. has to have an efficient 25 or a couple guys with 20 each, 17 each, something like that. Someone else has to step up, whether it's KP finally or if, it, if it's Tim Hardaway, uh, Brunson maybe is able to do something. Somebody else has to do something big. Dorian. Yeah. I'm actually going to go to the stat line of what I was saying earlier. I'm going to say the Mavericks win game six if the Clippers shoot 37% or under from three. Mm. It's a I'll good say, one. I'm going to say that. And I'm going to say the Mavericks win if they do not shoot 17% from three. <laughs> that's how they lost. If they make <laughs> more buckets. Yeah, that's how they lost. That's what I lost game four. Let us know all those things in the comments. We appreciate it. We will be back with a post game. Guys, thanks so much for listening to Lockdown Mavs. Peace out. Boom.